Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video you're going to see how I've completed this kookaburra from start to finish. We'll have a look in more detail at how I've completed the beak and gotten that shiny texture. The pencils that I've used for this piece are Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and the paper is Fabriano Artistico Hot Press watercolour paper. In the description below I'll put a list of the pencils and paper that I've used so you can have a look at the colours. And if you like this video remember to like and subscribe for more tutorials to come in the future. And if any of these tips have helped or you've completed a piece like this remember to tag me on Instagram or let me know in the comments below what's worked for you. So let's get started drawing the kookaburra. So kookaburras are native to Australia where I am from. We don't have many around the area that I'm in at the moment because there's not many big bushy gum trees or anything but I have seen them around in the past and they are just such beautiful birds. So when starting a piece like this, I always go through and do a swatch sheet, which you can see on the right hand side where I pick all of the colors that I want to use. I use Photoshop and put the reference photo on there and then use the color picker to pick out all of the colors in between. I also use another sheet of paper just to mix all the colors together to try and get all of the textures and the colors that I need for each part of the piece. So for the beak, it's sort of like a gray, pink and blue tone. So if you make sure you have a look at the reference photo and really study it before you start, you can pick out all the colors that you need and then work out the layering process before you even start. So this gives you a good guide of um, which colors you need to use, what order you need to use them in, and then you can gradually build up the tones. So for this beak, um, the top section, I went between the warm gray one, beige red, sky blue, and then I would go in with my white Holbein waxy pencil, the soft white, and blend all of that together really softly. So every layer that you're putting down is really, really soft and you're just gradually building up the tone. So then in the more pinker areas, you go in with more pink and then in the bluer areas, you go in with more blue. And then mixing those two colors together also makes this really beautiful purple tone which makes it a little bit gray tone as well. So it sort of does the dark gray color for you. And then going in with the darker tones like the dark sepia, and I also use Payne's gray in this case. So then when I had the top of the beak in, I then went into the bottom and started to put all of that in. So for this one, I use the same beige red and I use a little bit of ivory as a base color along with the warm gray one and then gradually work up with the raw umber and burnt sienna pencil to get those darker colors. Then when you've got the base colors in and you're sort of happy with all of the shapes and everything, you can go in with the darker tones and start to get darker. So then when I finished the beak, I just started to go in and put in more feathers around the face and then you can step back and have a look at the values and see how dark everything should be. So I could see here that the beak on the middle section really needed to be a lot darker. Um, it was far too light at this stage. So then you can just gradually go in and build up the colors. So if you go in too heavy and too hard at the start and then you decide that it's all too dark, it's really hard to make it lighter or to match that darkness with the rest of the colors. So it's good to go in with lighter layers and gradually build up the tones because you can at least um, rub out lighter tones a lot easier. So once the beak and the head was in I then moved to the left hand side and started to put in some of the feathers down the back. So when I've completed textures like this in the past I've learned that you should go in and just outline the shape of the feathers to start with. So if I just go over with a base of the warm gray one or ivory I may lose the graphite lines and not be able to find where each of the feathers are and it can be really frustrating to try and figure out where each feather goes. So I start by going in with a lighter brown tone like the nougat, lightly outlining the shape of the feathers and then just go through feather by feather and add them in one at a time. The same with the blue section, I went in straight away with the sky blue and outlined all of the blue feathers and where each of them will go and then started to build up the brown tones around the feathers and then sort of put them in feather by feather, one by one, paying close attention to the reference photo. So with textures like this, you just need to make sure that you're sort of mimicking each section 
accurately from the reference photo and it will all come together. So as you start to do textures like this, it does look odd. And at the moment you sort of think it doesn't look very good. I don't think it's going to come together. But once you put the white feathers on the stomach and the breast in, it will all start to come together. You just need to trust the process and it will all come together in the end. So moving now to the front of the bird where we're doing the white feathers on the chest. Some people really struggle with white feathers and white fur to get the different textures in there and not make it look too muddy. So what I did with this one is go in with the warm grey one and a bit of the ivory as a base layer and then just went in a little bit harder with the warm grey one to depict where the darker areas are on the bird. So making sure to look at your reference photo and mapping out where all of the darker sections are. Then I started to go in with the sky blue, dark Naples ochre, a little bit of the salmon um, and beige red and just start to build up the colors and put in all the shadows with those different tones. So remember as we did in the beak, using the blue and pink tones together will make sort of a purple effect and also a bit of a grayscale effect. So these are great for the shadows on the white feathers. So it's just a matter of going in with the light base tones, which is the warm gray one, ivory. I also used a bit of warm gray two as well. And then going with the mid tones, like the sky blue, salmon, and also the beige red to get some of the shadows. And then you can go back in with some of the warm gray one and the ivory to blend a little bit and then step back, have a look at where all the shadows are and start to go a little bit darker with the sky blue and the salmon and the beige red to get a little bit darker. Remember, always going in with light layers. So just because I say go in a little bit darker means just go over with more layers, not more pressure on your pencil. So moving on to the bark section, I still use um, the warm gray one, the beige red, the sky blue colors to get the same sort of tone going through the branch as what I did going through the bird because you sort of want it to be like a cohesive piece where you're using the same sort of colors for each um, element of your piece. With a bark texture like this I usually go in the same sort of procedure as I did with the back of the wing go in with the lighter colors and sort of map out where all of the darker tones are Go over with your light base colors, which I use the warm gray one, beige red, and also in the bluer colors, I use some of the cobalt turquoise really, really softly, and then went over that with the white waxy pencil, which makes it a really pale blue color, which is what you want. Then once the lighter colors are in and you've put in the mid-tones, which is the colors of the pinks and the blues, you can go in with the darker colors like the burnt sienna, Walnut Brown, Caput Morton Violet, Vista, Payne's Grey and the Dark Sepia to do all of the shadows and get the dark little highlights. So I think that bird feet can probably be one of the most fiddly thing that you need to put in when you're doing a piece like this. Such small intricate little details so make sure your pencil is nice and sharp and you're just putting in the shadows so making sure there are shadows underneath the feet otherwise they don't look like they're sitting on anything it looks like they're sort of blended into the same thing that they're sitting on then for the tail I just went in and did some really really light colors and again worked up to the darker colors making sure that the darker colors are underneath the branch and then it gets lighter towards the end of the tail and then as usual I left it overnight let it sit and get some fresh eyes the next day and go over it and put in more shadows so you can see here like under the wing under the body of the bird under his feet and also under the chin and also on the chest just needed to be darker with more shadows but it's better to go in and add all the shadows after the fact rather than putting them all in and seeing that they're too dark at the time so finally you can see that I've gone in and just added more shadows under the wings under the body around the feet and just darkened up around the eye as well so I hope that you like this tutorial. Please let me know in the comments below if any of these tricks have helped today. And remember to tag me on Instagram if you complete a piece like this because I would love to see it. And if you're interested, I will have greeting cards made of this print on my Etsy page. So make sure to check that out as well. Remember to like and subscribe and let me know what you would like to see in the future. Thanks. Bye.